Hey, it's Jeremy here. Welcome to another tutorial. I'm going to be showing you how to create a stippling brush. The first thing you want to do is get a 20 cents coin and we're going to just use a normal 2B pencil and draw a guideline around it. Once you have that, get a felt tip pen. I'm using a multi copic liner and it's just a 0.5 weight. And what you're going to do is apply pressure and just apply dots onto the paper within the guide and you want to press. You want to try and have more dots in the middle and then as you go out, make it more lighter so it sort of like fades out. And once you've done that and you're happy with it, what we're going to do is just take a picture with your phone and then we're going to bring it into Photoshop. So I'm going to drag my JPEG and I'm going to drag it in. You can use your phone to take a picture or your camera, it doesn't really matter. What I'm going to do first is go to the top left corner, click on image, click mode and go to grayscale because we don't want any color in it. So what I'm going to do now as well is I'm going to crop it. So what I'm going to do is press M for the marquee tool, just make a selection closer to the brush. As you can see there, now it has a selection. What I'm going to go do is image and crop. So now it's cropped it, so now it's you know smaller. We don't have all this um, space around it for no reason. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to the top the, on the right hand side to my layers panel. So you can see I've got my layers on the right hand side. I'm just going to unlock that. So click the lock there on the right to unlock the layer. What I'm going to then do is go to the bottom and click this little circle. You'll see in the bottom there with the drop down menu. And what we're going to do is go to levels. And what this does, it's going to add a layer where we can edit these levels. We can turn it off and on. And we can also adjust the um, mids, the highs and the shadows or you know the blacks and the whites. And what we want to do, we want to get rid of this gray ring. Usually you could rub it out when you're doing your sketch um, or do it like a thinner line or a light line and rub and they'll be easy. But I didn't do that, so I'm going to show you how to get rid of it. So I'm going to drag this right, this white bar from the right all the way this way. I'm going to drag the black up and we want to get rid of this circle. So you want to get this middle one. You see this is like the mid, the grays or the mid tones. I'm going to drag that down and you can see it's still showing. So we'll drag the white like that a bit and we'll drag these other ones a bit more just like that. So you can see now we've just got all these black spots, all these pixels, as you can see there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go image mode and sorry, not image mode, but we're going to, we're going to save it. So what I'm going to do is just save as, or you can go um, quick export as JPEG. So I'll say brush edited. And what I'm going to do is now get this brush you made and drag it into Illustrator. So now you can see it's a just a JPEG and what we have to do is image trace it. So what I'm going to do is click it, top, go to the top left corner and you'll see the button image trace. You can see where my mouse is. I'm going to click that and I'm going to click this little box on the left here so we can get the options for the image trace menu. So you can see what it's done, it's got all the black spots and it's just sort of got on all these spots but you can see they're not really organic it's more just straight lines and the shapes it's not really looking the way I want it to so what I'm gonna do is play around with some of these options I'm gonna go to advanced and just drop down that advanced menu and a cool trick is that you want to turn preview off because if you leave it on it might lag your computer so you want to turn it off then adjust the parameters then turn it back on so I'm gonna turn that off I'm also gonna click ignore white at the bottom here just like that. So we'll get rid of the white space. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to increase the threshold a little bit. Um, I also want the corners to be more, you know, organic. So I'll probably drag that down. And if we want more noise, I'm going to drag this down a little bit just so we get some more dots and details. And I'm going to press preview again and see what happens. So you can see what happens. It's, it's sort of edited it. It's added a bit more. And I'll leave preview on for now so you can see as I edit these changes, you can see it adds more and more. So you can see less noise will decrease the amount of dots, but we want as many dots as you want because it's a stippling brush. Keep in mind that the more dots or the more, it will create the more anchor points and it will um, require more of your CPU and your computer. So it might lag a little bit if it's a lot. I'll drag the corners down. Maybe I want it more, you know, circular or more straight. You can see that the paths. You see that less corners, 
with the pars, it's like less anchor points. But if you do it more, you can see it's more detailed. It's more uh, round. That means there's more anchor points. But if you drag the paths low, it means less paths, less anchor points, which sort of looks choppy. doesn't look too good. So I usually try and keep the paths at like 85%, which is kind of nice. And I might drag the threshold a bit more. If you go less, you can see what it does. Become like that. But I'll probably keep it around 200-ish. Cool, that's looking good. So once I've done that, what I do is I press expand, the top left corner, click that, and now it's actually a shape. It's You can see it's grouped as well, but you can see these are all just shapes now. And now what we can do is go to add our brush. So I can scale this down using my Shift and Alt if I want. So you can see what it looks like when it's small, or I can drag it big. The key is, um, when you create the brush, if it's like a bigger size, it may look different to when it's smaller. So just keep in mind as well. So I'll just drag a bit more down. I'm going to go to Window, go to Brushes, get my brush panel up. I'll just drag this out here. I'm just going to quickly delete these brushes. Um, you can go select All Unused and just click the bin. What I'm going to do now is get this brush and drag it in. And it will give you three options. Scatter brush, Art brush and Pattern brush. Usually because this is for texturing, it's more of a textured brush, stippled brush, you want to go to scatter brush. So I'm going to click scatter, press OK. And you see you'll get some options. If you're not using a Wacom tablet, you not, don't have to worry too much about th this stuff, but um, you can play around. Usually I can just set it on random, um, the size. So if I play around with these percentages, it's going to affect the sizing. Every time I press it, it'll be like a little bit um, bigger or less, and it's randomized. And you can scatter it a bit more as well if you want, or the rotation. And I'll put that on random, just play around a little bit, just like that. So you can play around with that, but that's fine. And then I press OK. So now you can see my brush is added here. So now if I press B, you see it's starting to add that brush. So if I go like this, you can see that the brush is working. You can also press P for the pen tool, make a line. So you can see I have a line here, and I'm going to select the brush again, and I can add the brush to the line. But you can also decrease the, the points of the stroke. So if I want it smaller, I'll go 25 points. If I want it big, I can go like 5 points. You can see it sort of edits it and doesn't look too good. So you can see now, because we've made the brush really big, um, the default is going to look like that. That's why you got to drag it down and then redo the brush. So if I do it this small and redo it, um, I'll call it brush two. So now if I select that one, whoops, I select the second one we made, you can see the difference now. So that's why it's important to be wary of the size you're creating it at. So now, um, you know, we can play around with it. We can add it to illustrations, we can add it to shapes, we can add a clipping masks. So if I want to add a circle, make it orange, just delete these parts here. And what I'll do is I'll make a copy of this circle. So I've got two circles, because we're going to make a clipping mask. I'm going to get the brush and I'm going to just paint around the bottom part like this. I'm going to select the smaller one and I'll do that. And you can see how it's sort of spaced out. We can always double click and go through and play around with um, the spacing again. So you can, as you can see, as I'm playing around with it, it's make it's changing it up. So you can see that we can have it like this. If we want it to have a bit of a scatter, you can do that. But I don't really like that because I'm texturing certain spots. Give a bit of a rotation and the sizing. You can see the sizing. We'll just leave that at 100%. So kind of like that, I press OK. And you want to apply to strokes. So it's going to apply to everything in your art, um, artboard. I'm going to get this circle, bring it to the front. I'll select this and select my path. And I'll select them both by holding shift. Go to object, clipping mask, make. And now you can see we've sort of got this grain effect on the circle, which is kind of cool. And then we can play around with the blending modes. You can go multiply, color burn. And it should work. Another key trick as well is that if you want to change the color of this, you can see it's not changing color. We have to actually double click 
back onto the tech, the brush we have, and you want to change the method to tints and shades. So you can go hue shift, you can go tints. So we leave it on tints for now. Press OK. Apply to strokes. So now. So I don't know why it's just made like a copy. Oh, it's because I added a stroke to the... Get rid of that stroke. Okay, now I got this. Okay, I'll double click. Go into the path. And now you can change the color, as you can see there. And then we can play around with the blending modes and now it'll work. Color burn, multiply is good. You also got overlay, which is good too. Color dodge looks nice sometimes too. And just like that. So yeah, that's how you create a stippling brush. Hope this was helpful. You can create some awesome texturing with it. And yeah, um, leave a comment below if you like this tutorial. Also subscribe because I put more um, tutorials up every week.